the face you make when you realise that you got up early to watch Monday Night Raw for no reason. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 28th edition of Monday Night Raw. That was one of the worst Raws I've ever seen. I'm not even joking. I literally saw so much on this, this show that I didn't want. So much. So basically, this is how it starts. So the show started off with the intro, uh, great intro, blah, 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 not much. And then the announcing of all the matches, the Falls County Anywhere match, uh, Sin Cara versus Andrade, Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet, all that crap. And then we got Paige with, uh, with the Kabuki Warriors, and they came out to the ring, uh, started to cut a promo. Paige said a bunch of stuff that I didn't really catch up with, and then Carrie Sane started talking in her own, la her own language. Asuka started talking in her own language, and then Asuka sprayed Paige with green mist for no reason, don't even know why. Then Becky, Becky Lynch comes down to the ring. A brawl breaks out to see if um to see if Paige uh Becky Lynch is on a two on one match because of uh uh Asuka being there. It's not an official match yet, so um Asuka and Kyrie Sane beat down Becky Lynch, but Becky Lynch gets the best of them. She throws Kyrie Sane in the ring, and after all of the the stupid stuff in the ring. Carry C and taps out to the arm bar or the or the uh, arm breaker. So then we got a promo with Our Truth before his match with Buddy Murphy. Just weird, don't know why. Then we got Street Profit promos. Um, like if these if, the, if WWE has not got a thing to do with the Street Profits, don't make them have a useless promo like that. Like really, don't just give them something better to do. Then we got we got an actual good match that we deserved from last week, and that was Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet. Um, and at the end of the match, Randy Orton uh, RKO's Ricochet to get the um, uh, uh, disqualification. So then after that, we got the OC and uh, Corello Humber Humberto Corello, I think it is, backstage uh, in a promo. They were talking about their match, blah, 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 stupid stuff. And then we got the Viking Raiders versus local competitors. This match was okay. Obviously, the local competitors didn't really do good, but what the Viking Raiders did to the local competitors was interesting. You know, it was a squash match, but what they did to the local competitors was good. And then we got Sin Cara versus Andrade. I don't, what, what is WWE thinking whenever they have this kind of rivalry? I don't want to see a rivalry between Sin Cara and Andrade. Sin Cara has been ruined by the WWE so many times, yet he feels like he needs to come back every single time. Just cancel your contact, bro, and go to AEW. You do not need to come back for meaningless promos against Andrade. But anyway, um... Uh, Sin Cara was not alone. He had his girlfriend or manager, or whatever it was. Uh, so basically, but it didn't help because Andrade cheated by putting his uh, legs, his feet on the ropes. So he got the pen. And then we got Natalia and Charlotte Flair versus the Iconics. The tag team wasn't needed, but it was actually a good tag team. Um, Natalia pinned uh, or Natalia. Got uh, Billy Kay in the sharpshooter, and that was the end of Billy Kay. Oh, great. Halfway through the show already. You see, it's all about breaking down the show. You don't want to read the boring parts over and over again. Then we got a Seth Rollins backstage promo. Seth Rollins, I'm actually starting to see the pattern here. He is actually turned into a heel. He's gathering his hatred over the time, and he's turned into a heel. Because he literally cut the... The interviewer, Killa Braxton, he cut her before she could talk by saying, shut up, shut up, just, just I'll give you the highlights. So we got Seth Rollins backstage promo before his match. We got Seth Rollins versus Eric Rowan Falls Count Anywhere match. Why do we need that match? No. Yes, it was a good match, but did we need it? Was there a championship on the line? No. From now on, I don't care about the champions if they're not defending on, on, the, on the brand they're meant to be defending on. I don't care if they're there 24-7. They have to be defending. 
So no, I'm, I'm actually not really liking Seth Rollins anymore. Then we got an Alistair Black promo, um, just random crap. Him, him doing random crap, just talking, who wants to pick a fight with me? Just crap and all that. So yeah, we got, we got after that, we got flashbacks from Raw, flashbacks, blah, blah, blah. Then we got AJ Styles versus Carrillo, or Humberto Carrillo. It was dead on, but, um... AJ Styles got the win, and then AJ Styles wanted to give Humberto a gift of gratitude by handshaking. But it turns out that AJ Styles was joking. He did the wee jinx, and then Humberto laid him out with one punch. But then AJ Styles came back and laid Humberto out. I don't know. It went somewhat. It went something like that. Then we got King's Court with Rusev and Lana. First of all, this is what got me. King's Court is the only thing tonight on Raw that actually got me excited. You should have heard what Lana said to Rusev. Apparently, the reason why Lana broke up with Rusev is Rusev every single moment of the day. Doctor, dentist, home, cafe, restaurant, barber shop, wanted to have. It's a PG show. Wanted to have sexual intercourse with Lana. All that time. I'm trying to make it as, as PG as I can, but I'm just telling you the facts. Um. So basically, Rusev can't believe his eyes. He's like, what? Um. So apparently Lana said that Rusev was cheating on her. That's why she did this. And then apparently Bobby, Bobby Lassie came out of the ring. Uh, Rusev had Bobby Lassie down most of the... um. Time and then Lana thought, "Oh, I'll hit my wee down and out. I'll hit back. I'll hit Rusev with the candle stick." Eh, eh, eh. That didn't face Rusev. Rusev turns around. Lana says, "Hello there. Give me that." So Rusev grabs the candle stick, but Bobby Lashley thinks, "Oh, this is my time to shine. I'll uh, low blow him." So that was the highlight of the show. Well, it wasn't really a highlight. Rusev getting two low blows. Um, and yeah. That was the highlight of the show. Guys, above all, I'm sorry, but this Monday Night Raw did not meet my expectations. I'm giving this Raw a 4 out of 10. And that's not even funny. A 4 out of 10. WWE is dying. They really are. They're giving us crap matches, crap promos. No one wants to see matches these days without their title on the line. Mick AJ... Put his title on the line against Humberto Carrillo. Make Seth Rollins put his title up on the line against Rowan before his fa before his falls count anywhere match at Crown Jewel. Make Alistair Black do something. Make Sin Cara in a reasonable feud. Make the Street Profits do something. Make make the match with it with Natalia and Flair versus the Icons. Make it a number one contenders match for the women's tag team championships. What else? Make our truth versus Buddy Murphy for the um for a number one contenders match for the twenty four seven championship. Just make it interesting rather than a bunch of matches that have no meaning. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um. Uh, this week on Monday Night Raw, very bad show, very very bad show. Um, uh, nothing much to discuss with this show. Very poor. I, I, if if WWE's ratings go down tonight with that show, I won't be surprised because it was crap. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all later. Peace.